Gotta be careful with the scissors though. It's a little, makes me a little anxious having scissors this close to a plant like this. One wrong snip and I'm gonna feel bad about it for weeks. Hey there, it's Pat, and today I'm going to be working with this philodendron fibrosum. I'm planning on building a one by one tower with this, and I'm trying something new here with uh, cocoa, putting cocoa inside the tower, and that seems to be a good way to fill up some of that space so visually it's a little bit more appealing. And also, it seems like that using cocoa allows us to mist down and keep a little bit of extra moisture in here. Looks like some of the older aerial roots on this plant have dried up, so. Hopefully for the future, that'll be a way to keep everything a little bit more healthy. Okay, so making a tower, what I like to do is start with the tower as two halves. Connect those around the plant and then insert everything into the soil. So what I find that helps with is getting everything square. Sometimes it's difficult to put the half hexagons and the bases in one at a time and keep everything square. So starting with just two halves, connecting them together, and then pushing everything into the soil is a great way to start. We're starting from a nice square point, and we don't have to try to bend the trellis around as it grows taller to make it square. So I'm connecting all of my half hexagons to the bases, and then I can put in the L connectors and make my two halves. So I'll put in all of the L connectors before I get started. And that way, once this is getting wrapped around the plant, I don't need to add any more. It's hard for me to get my fingers in there sometimes. So this is one half. We're just making one connection. I'm gonna go ahead and attach this other L connector. So that's ready there. I'll connect the other two halves together. The other two quarters to make my other half. And my last L connector. So now I've got my two halves. I've got my stakes and everything ready. I'm gonna bring this plant over. I'm going to disconnect this soft tie. I'm going to leave the top one so I don't have to worry about this plant as I'm building this section. Okay, All right, so from here, this plant's potted right in the center, so I'm going to try to center this trellis in the pot. We recently repotted this, so it should live in this pot for another three months, maybe even six months. Firmly pushing everything down pretty much as far as I can go. The deeper I can get those stakes, the faster those roots are gonna wrap around and make this all one unit. So like I said before, what I want to do is put some cocoa in here. So I have a box of raw cocoa. Surprisingly difficult to source, but we got it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push that cocoa in with each layer of this trellis. So it looks like I'm probably gonna end up with at least three layers. And if I, if I put it all in at that point, it would be difficult to make everything uniform. So down here in a shoe box, I've got a bunch of cocoa. And I'm just gonna put this into my lap and pull out some sections. This looks like a good one. So yeah, this is just raw cocoa. In the past, what we've tried to do is use um, cocoa that's meant for hanging baskets. And that stuff seems to have a little bit of glue on it, so it's really difficult to break up and get it even and uniform. I'm gonna kind of make a piece like this and feed it in here and wrap it around. There we go. So cocoa doesn't actually absorb any water. So that's something to keep in mind is that water isn't going to 
soak into the cocoa, it's just going to kind of sit on the fibers as individual drops. So if you're in an environment where the humidity is really low, this could be one way to get some extra humidity where the water is just evaporating, maybe around some roots, something like that. Again, we're just starting to use this, so I don't have a ton of feedback as to how well it works. But for now, that looks pretty good. So the next row is going to just be these wood hexagons. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to connect these together and create my halves. And then I will connect it around the, around the plant and connect it to the rest of the trellis. So I got one half. other half. I'm going to put my H connectors on, I'm going to put the H connectors on the corners down here. So now once these are on, I just need to get the hexagons fed in. Nothing difficult yet because again this plant doesn't have any leaves down here which is a little disappointing, but sometimes that's just how the cookie crumbles. Okay. As we move up, we're just going to repeat this process. We're going half hexagons and then full hexagons. Oh, looks like I got a piece of cocoa in there. So that's the tricky part with this cocoa, is that the fibers tend to go everywhere. Once I finish up, I've got a pair of scissors down here and I'm going to give it a little haircut. And that'll keep everything inside the hexagons, hopefully. Okay, so there's a layer. We're going to add in some more cocoa. Everything looks nice and snug. We can move on. Looks like after the next layer, I'll be able to remove that stake and the plant should just be resting in there. I think this is gonna look pretty great. It's gonna fill up this space down here and then we, we might even forget that we don't have any leaves. We might like this more. I doubt it. This is a really pretty plant. Okay, Coco's in. All right, so now we're getting up to the leaves. And we need to start thinking about where we want those leaves to be sitting in the trellis. So it looks like this leaf is going to fall into a, a half hexagon there. This one, we get to make a decision if we want to pull it down or rest it up on the next layer. I think it's going to rest on the next layer that looks like more of a natural place for it. So we'll grab our half hexagons and we're going to start putting this together. Following the same, same pattern as before, I'm gonna stick with my halves and I'll feed this leaf into one of those halves. can put one L connector in each okay so I'm gonna start back here yeah so this looks like naturally it just wants to go on that next layer so this one we're not gonna have to worry about feeding the leaves through just going to attach my H connectors and then I'm ready to attach the next row of half hexagons. Alright, 
right, so this will put us at the halfway point for this layer. This leaf, definitely going to be going... Yeah, okay, so I'm just going to feed this through. Where is the front? Easy peasy. And then I just need to put in my last section here. And this is straight. All right, that's our third row. The next row is gonna be a set of hexagons and that looks like it's going to be the last one. And I might try to get this section in there because that'll be the point where the plant is really secure. The tricky part is going to be, once the plant runs out this way, that it's eventually going to need to come back through the trellis. So we'll have to keep an eye on that vine pretty close over the next couple weeks. Let's get started. Again, we're following the same pattern. I'm going to make my halves, and then I'll connect them to the trellis. You know what I forgot to do? Put in my cocoa. So let's do that. It's time for you to go. So now that the stake's out, the plant's definitely moving around a little bit. Looks like the cocoa would be a good way to keep it nice and settled. That's really nice. That's a really good way to keep these plants held nice and tight. So looking at this now, I think what make the, might make the most sense is to capture this leaf. Capture this leaf right here in the hexagon and keep this part of the vine inside the tower. And then as it grows, we can just capture the leaves. We don't have to worry about this main stem. These main stems can be really strong, tough to deal with. And uh, it, sometimes it just takes a lot of maintenance and a lot of oversight to keep them in check. Once they get hardened off, really mature, they can really be a, a bear to deal with. So we're getting back to our hexagons. I'm gonna make my halves. I'm gonna put my H connectors on before I attach these. Okay, H connectors are on. It looks like this leaf is the only one we have to deal with here. Okay, so yeah, when we're working with these leaves, we wanna pay attention to how they're naturally growing. But then on the other end of it, we want to get those leaves in that trellis so that everything's secure. So these plants are really, they're always moving and we can't see it because it's happening so slow. But once they're held tight and they can't move around freely, it's kind of a signal that it's got a strong anchor. And with that, the plant can start using more energy to grow bigger leaves and less energy moving around looking for a stable place to grow. So sometimes the leaves we want to support them up, sometimes we want to support them pushing down, but either way, right now, everything's very sturdy. When I shake this, the only thing that's moving are the leaves. The stem is nice and tight and that's exactly what we're looking for. So I'm gonna finish this off. I'm just gonna put a little bit more cocoa inside. And after that, this is a complete trellis. So now that all my cocoa is done, I'm gonna take a pair of scissors and I'm just gonna trim away the flyaways. It's gonna make this a lot cleaner and hopefully that means the cocoa won't be getting snagged and falling out all over the greenhouse and making a mess. If there's any big bunches, I'm just gonna push those in these. This is mostly just for aesthetic purposes. Gotta be careful with the scissors though. It's a little, it makes me a little anxious having scissors this close to a plant like this. One wrong snip and I'm gonna feel bad about it for weeks. Okay. I think this looks pretty good. 
so there we have it philodendron fibrosum on a one by one tower with wood and white if you wanted to build this trellis yourself what you'd be purchasing from our store would be two sets of four corners which would be an eight corner pack and a 10 pack of wood hexagons would get you started you could purchase a medium starter pack in wood and that's going to include all the bases it would also include the h connectors the l connectors in wood and there you have it so thanks for watching thanks for checking out this guide have a good one